let's begin with the issue of the you know Undigbo because this, the the prominent Igbo leaders and leaders as well as stakeholders and various groups across varied platforms have continued to express anger over verbal attack on the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, by Governor Charles Soludo. But the governor said he won't succumb to bullies. Do you think Governor Soludo has really stirred a hornet's nest to warrant these attacks? Yes, if you are familiar with the nature of politics in our country, then you will not be surprised at the way Peter B. supporters have descended on the governor of Anambra State. The last thing that supporters of Peter B. want to hear is that he cannot win the election. And when the governor said, look, there is no foreseeable path to victory for Peter B. And claim that Peter B is playing a game. He knows that he cannot win and all that. He more than angered Obi supporters. As far as Obi supporters are concerned, he represents the best so there was confusion. Um, candidate in the race. As far as they are concerned, is the candidate to beat. And they don't like hearing it when you say that Obi has not got structures, Obi has not got people who can work for him in uh, some states or in many states. As far as they are concerned, Obi is riding the crest of stardom. Obi is immensely popular, far more popular than other candidates in the race. And in their view, Obi is not just the candidate to beat, Obi is the candidate that will win the election. So when the governor of Obi state then comes out after first declaring that Obi's investments back uh, in the day as governor have amounted, yeah. uh, amounts to nothing today, that right. was bad enough. That certainly angered them. But following it up, or responding to their insults by going for the juggler, by saying, look, there is no foreseeable path to victory for Peter Obi. There is no way Obi will win this election. Obi knows that he cannot win. He's a joker. <laughs> there is no way that he can, he can uh, defeat the other candidates. He's, he's not going to come in second. By saying that, he clearly angered Obi supporters. And whether we like it or not, a lot of our friends in the Southeast are happy for one reason. They believe that in the Nigerian states, the people of the Southeast have been marginalized thoroughly. They believe that this is the year, this ought to be the year of the Southeasterner to become president of our country. They believe that this ought to be even left, this contest ought to be left to the Southeast. But that, that's not what we have seen. And Obi, by stepping out of PDP before the primaries began and joining the Labour Party to become the standard bearer of the Labour Party, Obi effectively did something that energized that base, energized those who believe that this is the turn of the Southeast. It's difficult to find people who believe that this is the turn of the Southeast going against Peter Obi. As far as they are concerned, is the best for this time. Is the best of all the candidates, the 18 candidates in the race. And when someone comes out to now say, oh, Obi cannot win. Obi is a joker. He has not got what it takes. Uh, his investments 
on behalf of an Ambra state now amounts to nothing. That person has diminished or be in their eyes. To them, that person is an enemy of progress. In fact, if you uh, say the way the Ohaneze uh, spokesperson uh, described him, he said that he described him as a, he described Soludo as a traitor who was out to discredit obese legacies. You know? So, as far as he's concerned, how can the state governor of two presidential candidates, a governor whose state produced two presidential candidates, the presidential candidate of Abga and the presidential candidate of Labour Party, come to the conclusion that Obi cannot win. So, for the Ohanese, Obi's statement was premature as far as they are concerned. It's too early in the day to declare that Obi cannot win the election. And they even see him as an agent of rival geopolitical zones that do not want the Southeast to produce the next president of our country. So this is an emotive thing. This is, the emotions have simply taken over. I can tell you that a good number of Southeasterners back in Obi who are not Obi supporters, they, they did not really care about Obi in the past, even some months back. But by getting into that race and making sure that the Southeast would have someone on the ballot, the presidential ballot, he has energized that base. He has made them happy. He has made them proud. In fact, remember what the governor of Ebony said. He said, it's a thing of joy that the Igbos now have a presidential candidate, one who is strong. That, that is the sort of thing. Yes, he's in a rival party. But even at that, because he could not emerge as a candidate of his own party from the uh, APC primaries, neither did anyone emerge who is of Igbo extraction from the primaries of the, of the PDP of the SDP and uh, many of the well-known parties. But for me to have emerged, for me to have played that game very well and emerged as the presidential candidate of Labour Party, that has made him the hero of a good number of people who believe that this ought to be the turn of the Southeast and they are prepared to give him their support, whether it is financial, you know, or moral support, they are prepared to give. Now, anybody who steps in to attack Peter Obi would expect the worst of repercussions for, for, for making that happen. I'm not even surprised that some are already talking about impeachment of the governor of, uh, of uh, Anambra State. Some are already saying, look, um, Soludo should forget about a second term. He will not be re-elected. So then, criticizing Peter Obi at this point and declaring that Peter Obi cannot win the election amounts to waging war against the Igbo interest. So this is the way they are seeing it. And the angry way, uh, the angry manner in which Ohanese responded to this uh, uh, quarrel between governors, I mean, two, between a governor and a former governor, underlines the point that I'm making, and that I'm making that for those who believe that this is the year in, I mean, this is uh, the 2023 election is an election that should see an Igbo man emerge as president of our country to such people. Obi represents the best choice. Obi is the hero. Obi is the person that no one should attack. And if anyone attacks Obi, whether that person is Soludo or myself or anybody for that matter, 
they are going to respond, OB supporters will respond with indescribable anger. This is what we have been seeing since this, um, this whole thing began. Even for some of us who have tried our best to be objective, you will see that on this show, so many times we have highlighted the uh, successes that Peter will be as recorded, yeah. you know, in this campaign. And we have never for one day said Peter will be is not good enough for the job. But Absolutely. for the fact that we bear the names that we bear, for the fact that we walk where we walk, we, we have seen so obese supporters come to our wall, our social media handles, to call us all kinds of names, to call us slaves, uh, to, 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 to call us APC supporters, whereas even in their hearts, they know that they do not criticize the APC government as much as I do. The facts are there. But right. for reasons best known to them, they see some of us as opposed to obese emergence okay. yeah and, uh, uh, I, I wonder where the where the evidence for that is they cannot provide evidence absolutely that i dressed down or be at any point in time or that i said will be uh, it's not special.